um, I, I want to yeah. ask you about that. Mm. Do you see one day that Shanghai um, slash Beijing will actually rival the Bay Area in terms of its capabilities and its I think success? This is sure. I mean, there's no reason why not. Mm -hmm. it's, it's going to take time. Uh, but, you know, what? Uh, for me, one of the most interesting indicators is, you know, you know, we get a constant, uh, as VCs, we get a constant flow of resumes from people looking for opportunities to work with us to start up companies or looking for employment opportunities in our companies and so on. Um, the flow of Chinese nationals, what we call the returnees, right. Right, the flow of Chinese nationals back to China is well known, well documented. Anybody who follows these industries is, is aware of that and is aware that you know, we are now in what some people call a reverse brain drain with a lot of Chinese talent migrating to China. Um, that's going to drive uh, a very rapid transfer of capability to China. Um, and so, uh, so it's inevitable that, that, that we're going to see, uh, we're going to see companies and, in, and academic institutions in China that rapidly come up to uh, the, the, the same level as the best of, uh, of the institutions here. What's really interesting to me is I am now getting a steady, uh, a steady flow of resumes from people with no Chinese ancestry or, or history at all. Mm -hmm. So these are Caucasian, you know, Euro, whatever, Euro-American um, scientists and managers who are just writing me letters, sending me emails saying, you know, it just seems like th it, there's a lot of excitement in China. Are there any, any opportunities for someone like me? I don't speak Chinese. I did, you know, and so it's Isn't amazing. That interesting? Yeah. It's amazing. And to me, that's a very interesting indicator. So, okay, so if we take that trend and it, it, it assumes that it's going to develop the way it has, what will that mean um, to? One, the, the U.S. healthcare here, the, the market here, and, and two, to um, the China's domestic healthcare market. Uh, <laughs> I know right. that's a good, that's a big question. It's a big question. I mean, yeah. uh, outsourcing it, here, the, the word outsourcing so far has right. you know meant manufacturing and at right. most perhaps IT, and um, so that has has been politically, it has been a controversial. Another major issue in the election has been healthcare, right. but these two haven't so far been together. Right. Do you see one day that uh, you know these two issues become one? Oh, okay, you know we are outsourcing our healthcare or, or life sciences to China and and so on and so forth. I, I'm assuming since the cost of healthcare is so high here, um, people you know that may people may see that as a benefit. But uh, could there be other issues like safety concerns on the products? And, you know, right. just that's right. what I'm Right. So, thinking. yeah, so that is, uh, that's a lot of questions. Yeah. I think that China offers both opportunities and risks to the U.S. healthcare enterprise. Mm -hmm. The opportunity, there, there are several opportunities. One of the main opportunities, of course, we've already touched on, which is the ability to do R&D more cost-effectively there using a, a talent pool which is every bit as capable as, as the talent here. Um, if we can do that properly, it will certainly bring down the cost of bringing new medicines to the market. So that has to benefit uh, American consumers. It will also benefit those, those companies which can find the right ways to, to make use of those resources in China. Not just to save on costs, but also to amortize their R&D development over a larger market. See, so the, 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 the larger the market you're serving, the larger risks you can afford to take um, in, in developing new products. If you're developing a product for a very small market, you know, obviously the, the amount of risk you can take and the amount you can inve invest in that is pretty limited. So, uh, so the, the, the emergence of China, um, I, I think, you know, offers, you know, offers clear, uh, clear opportunities for both consumers and for companies um, in, in, in the U.S. 
the you know the 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 risk and you know you referred to outsourcing uh, the risk certainly is that uh, we will see our lead in r and d capabilities and in um, uh, and in, in in the development of new intellectual property we 're going to see that lead erode if you if you think in nationalistic terms, uh, uh, then certainly you could see that as a threat to the United States. Right. But if you look from a global standpoint, the fact that other countries, and it's not just China, right. the fact that other countries are rapidly increasing the amount of R&D that they're doing and the number of patents that they're filing, in the end that should benefit the whole world. Um, and, uh, and, and so, I think it's partly a matter of how we manage these changes. I frankly think that the biggest risks to the U.S. are really things that originate here at, here at home. If the United States does not rethink its approach to education, and if it does not rethink its approach to immigration, which has really fueled our industries, then I think we are definitely taking some, some big chances with our future.